Hey guys, welcome back to Little Ian Rose. I am Summer Noel, and today we are gonna do a super fun cup. Uh, we are gonna do a wine glass. I'm gonna show you how to do a buffalo plaid on a wine grass, what wine grass, wine glass. And I'm gonna show you how to tape it off and to do the stem and do everything and make it this beautiful thing. I'm gonna do black and red. Um, so I am already gearing up, even though it's April, I'm already gearing up for holiday sales because you will get absolutely slammed 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 during the holidays so it's good to start now and kind of start getting stuff prepped even if you just use a big giant plastic tub to store everything and just prepare you for the holidays because you are going to get so many orders it's insane um you most shops on etsy are shut down by october for christmas orders because they've received so many people pre-ordering for christmas that they will not be able to produce um going into christmas because we get so busy um, so it's really good to start now, have everything ready, have a backup plan so that you can hit those sales and hit them hard for the holidays. So these, this Buffalo plaid that's black and uh, red looks very, very Christmassy. It's super cute to um, market it with a big red lavish bow around the handle and just super fun. It's really easy to take a gorgeous picture of this. It's so sparkly. It's so beautiful. Sell them as a set and they will go like gangbusters. Now you can do a very similar technique like this on a cup. Um, and it, it's pretty much the same idea and technique. Um, so that's why I'm showing you on a wine glass so you can get inspired to try it on different things. Um, but it, it's very easy to, to transition what we do on this wine glass onto a regular cup and do with that process. But it's harder, if you've only seen me do a cup, it's a little harder to go this way because you've got to work with this big heavy curve of this cup. So what you need are your three colors. It's actually really two colors. You want, I'm gonna do red and black today. Then I have a third cup where I mixed um, like two thirds of the red and one third of the black. And the reason I do that is because if I do it half and half, it just really just looks like black with a little bit of red glitter sprinkled in it. This way it looks like a good blend of both colors together. So you want it, what I call is the lighter color would be the red. Um, you want a little bit more of the red than the black. All right, so then you're gonna need a couple paint brushes. So you want triple thick, I have this ready to go, um, clear spray paint. Um, you can use tri triple thick spray, but you get a lot less of it. And the jar like this, you get a lot more for your money. It's only $5.99. And if you use your, your coupon for 40% off, it's a pretty good deal compared to the spray triple thick. But you can use the spray. So then you need the crystal clear um, spray paint. You need painter's tape. You'll need two different brushes. One is to apply your triple thick and one is to apply your Mod Podge. Then, oh, sorry. One is to apply your triple thick. Forgot why I need the two brushes. Okay, just had a brain fart with the second brushes, but it'll come up because I remember as I'm walking through this process. Then you also, and so we'll figure out as we go. Then you need another paintbrush. This one I use for my Mod Podge specifically on my plaids because it has a very square tip. Um, you can do it with these, but it's going to be a little messier and harder to control. I like this. This is, I have used this a billion times. I absolutely love it. I just wash it and clean it after each one because it's got such a straight edge and the edges are so nice and straight and it's pretty relatively stiff. So it's not going to lose its shape as we're painting. Then I just have these tools for when I'm needing to remove my, uh, paint, uh, tape, then these will help me uh, remove the tape. And then I have my Mod Podge. So this is a uh, dishwasher safe, but you don't necessarily need to use dishwasher safe, safe if you're working with epoxy over the top. However, if you are not going to use epoxy and you're not comfortable with epoxy yet, you can coat the entire cup in the dishwasher safe over the top. It will work for the dishwasher. It just won't have that smooth, glossy finish that epoxy has, but it will work. You just need to let it cure for, I believe it's 72 days. Cure 28 days. Sorry, 28 days. I thought it was 72 for some reason, but 28 days before you can put it in the dishwasher. So we have those three. So you have the Mod Podge, the Triple Thick, the Clear Spray Paint, and all your paintbrushes and all your glitter colors. Now you can do any glitter colors you want. I'm just going to show you with these because these sell like crazy and I'm working on sets of them right now, getting them ready for Christmas. So I figured I'll jump on here and show you how to do it. All right, so I'm going to clear some of this stuff out and we're going to get to taping this cup off. All right, so now I've moved away some stuff so it's not so cluttered here while you watch me. You can see what I'm doing a little better. I'm leaving my black glitter out because that's the first glitter I'm gonna work with. I've got my Mod Podge ready so I can just jump right into that with you guys with my paintbrush. Now for this step, you're gonna need an X-Acto knife and your tape. Now, my, I cannot, I have a hard time lifting the tape with these fingernails. So um, you're gonna lift up chunks of tape. You're gonna need five strips of tape. And what I do is to get these evenly placed, I will hook it inside the cup and I leave a little tail down and I fold it under so it's easy to, just a little corner, so it's easy to grab that to remove it. You're not having to struggle with it. And I'm gonna go straight down the cup to the middle. I'm gonna 
See how it tries to buckle? That's okay, just rub it down. Even if you get some creases, it, that does not matter. Okay, you're gonna bring this all the way down to the bottom of this cup and kind of wrap that around, break it off. And for now, we're just gonna tear it right at the base of this cup. All right, so that's gonna be your first piece. Get that all smoothed down really well. Okay, so I'm gonna stick that little tail extra piece off to the side. We're gonna get our next piece of tape. So now what you wanna to do to get these even is you basically wanna go one straight and almost like make a half of a peace sign. So you wanna go bend a corner down. And so you wanna go almost catty corner diagonal from that one. Down and down the cup. And before I finish that, I'm gonna grab my next piece of tape. Okay, and bend a corner down. Bend a corner down. You want about an inch away. Put it down. And roll it down the cup. And smooth it down. Again, the ripples in the tape are okay. They go away. You're gonna pull this extra tape off. Get it out of your way. You don't want it in your workspace. Okay. So that way it gave you here and then you're going to have you're going to place the next ones evenly between those two. They don't have to be exactly perfect. You don't have to be a perfectionist at this. Cuz once it's all done, you won't notice if it's an eighth of an inch off one way or the other. It's just going to look like a big glittery gorgeous cup. So this one I'm just going to place right in the middle of that one. Slide it down the cup, leave it. The next piece Tape, make my little notch halfway between. And down the cup. Okay, you're gonna press those down. Tear off the excess. Press that one down, tear off the excess. Okay, so now you have that basic part. So now you're gonna have about enough room for two pieces to go through here to give you your next strips. So you're gonna grab a decent length. Same thing, I leave a tab so it's easy to lift off. You don't have to be trying to pick it off and figure it out. I'm gonna start on the bottom. Now this is where you're gonna, it's gonna get a little tricky. I'm actually gonna zoom you guys in, see if it'll let me zoom you in. Oh, that's about all it's going to give me, right? Oh, let's see. Right there. Okay. Nope. It didn't like that. Okay. We got you zoomed, I think, as close as we can get. So now you will definitely get buckling when you're walk working your way around the cup for this. So you're going to need your X-Acto knife. Get it out. Get it ready. So you want to try to make it buckle. when it's Not when it's on the glass, seam, the C part. You want to make it buckle where it's on the blue tape. So I'm going to move this over a little bit so my tape isn't hanging off into my fur rug. I'm going to put my tab right here. Then I'm going to see, I'm going to, I'm going to curve it and see how it's buckling right here. I'm going to force that buckle over. Then it's going to be on the blue tape and I'm going to slice, lift. I didn't, I, sorry, I don't want to slice too hard. Slice it, lift that edge and smooth it down. Okay? You're going to do that all the way around the cup because you're going to you're going to have to buckle because you've got to slowly turn the tape to keep it flat. So see right there? I've now got it's lifted here, so I'm going to push my thumb down on the glass part, push my finger down on the glass part. See it's buckled there. So I'm going to slice it right down the middle with my Exacto knife. And I'm gonna slide and push that one under and slide and push this one over, all right? That's how you're gonna go around the entire cup. So you're gonna turn it as you're going. You're gonna push down on this part of the cup, push down on this part of the cup, get the buckle over the blue, slice, lay it down, 
and lay it down. All right, I'm gonna continue to do that all the way around the cup, and then I'm gonna do a second one along the top. I'm gonna to put you guys on high speed because this is a pretty tedious process, and I don't feel like you wanna spend 20 minutes watching me take this cup. I just wanted to give you the idea of how you do this, show you a few examples of working with that buckle so that it's very smooth across this part of the glass, and so we will get zoom in here. Okay, so I got pretty lucky and the top was a little bit easier than normal. I don't know why, but it just worked out a little. Maybe I went a little higher on the cup than I normally do. But I was able to just push the buckle over. I didn't even have to slit it. So the line across here is perfectly straight and perfectly straight. And then the little buckle, I was able to push over and get it right there. Um, so you got to see, I leave my tails. Everything has a tail, so it's very easy to grab and lift out. Okay, so now we're going to work on the bottom. So what I do with this is I take my X-Acto knife and I just slice very carefully with the exacto knife guys if you're not comfortable with a super sharp knife well just be very very careful because this is how we remove the circle for the stem so i'm just cutting through all that tape and then i'm going to lift it away it should leave me a nice little ring so you can use your weeding tool to get under there and pull it away. Looks like there's a little spot that didn't cut. Kind of bunched up there. there pull it away. Probably never thought you'd weed a wine glass, huh? <laughs> okay. There's a little well, actually, it goes right there. Okay, so now you are ready for the next step. So this handle is going to be one color. You can ch choose whether you want it white or black. Um, I've ar already got this starting uh, for a set, so I'm going to do it black, just like I did my other uh, tumbler. But I'm going to do that very last so that I can still hold this while I'm working on the rest. Okay, so now we're going to open up our Mod Podge. I use the lid of my Mod Podge. Even though I can, it kind of contaminates with glitter as I do this, but then I just take a paper towel and wipe the whole thing out before I replace it onto my Mod Podge so it doesn't really matter. So you just pour a little Mod Podge in the lid. Grab your very square edged, I could put my weeding tool to the side and my tank to the side. So you're going to grab your, sorry guys, I'm going to get closer so I can do this very tedious process with you guys. So you're going to take this. You do, this first round is easy because you don't have to be careful about where you put it. You're just gonna blop that Mod Podge on to all the holes. Anywhere there's a hole, we're gonna stick the Mod Podge. So this part, it doesn't really matter about it being square tipped, um, the paintbrush, because we're just getting it on there. It will matter a lot more as we get to the more detailed parts of this cup. Okay, so we're gonna paint in here. Sorry, I saw where the tape was bubbled, so I'm just pushing it back down so you don't get glitter in there. Some people say, oh, don't get it too clumpy. I, I get it clumpy and it's fine. I have no issues with it. So I don't worry about it being whether it's clumpy or not clumpy. All right, so then you're gonna take it and just tap the black is the first color I'm gonna use over all that Mod Podge. And tap it off and keep going. Oh, it's got a little buckle in it. Got a little more Mod Podge. All right, and that should be it for this color. Now, you don't have to wait for it to dry. That's the bonus of this cup. We're just going to move right into the next step. But I am going to pour all this glitter. The reason I'm using parchment paper, guys, is because it doesn't stick as much. To, the glitter doesn't stick as much to the parchment paper. So I'm going to clean this up real quick, and we will get on to the next color. All right, we are set up. I have my next color glitter ready. This is going to be the multicolor. So this is going to be the blend glitter. And we are going to start removing tape. You're just going to carefully remove that tape. Okay. 
The reason I start with the black first and then work my way down, because if the black gets into the uh, multicolored one, it's okay. Um, I just don't want it to get into the red one because I don't want to contaminate my red glitter when we start working with that. So see all the fallout that's falling down? That's fine because it doesn't really matter because we're going to be pouring, we're going to be, this has black in it already, so it doesn't matter if it mixes. So now is when you kind of really need to start using this uh, tea, uh, tea, teed off top, so very straight edge, and you're going to butt this up. I kind of start out in the middle and I slide towards it and press into the edge. The outside edge doesn't matter because it's cut, but every time you do it, an edge, you want to just butt right up to that butt, up to that line, and do that. So this is, gets a little bit more tedious, guys, and I'm not going to... Um, base paint this cup because I want to be able to see the glitter through the cup and see the pattern through the cup. But you can, if you want to, you can spray paint your cup. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, but this particular one I'm doing without a base coat. And if I was going to base coat this one, I would probably base coat it mm, red, maybe, uh, see, and that's why you would have to decide which one you would want to, uh, have it affect the glitter color because if you put the red down then it's going to affect the black you'll be able to see it through and if you put the black down you're going to be able to see it through the red so it's also a dilemma you have to make a decision about so I just glop some Mod Podge on there push it right up to the edge of that black on both sides And that's when the squared off tip comes in very handy because you can get a nice straight line right up against that edge without pushing too much glitter or using moving too much of the glitter. This little fine uh, paintbrush also comes in really handy for when you have to do the second layer because you won't have any tape guides. You have to literally hand paint all your squares. Sorry, you can hear my kids are having a blast inside the house playing. It sounds like they're screaming, but that's a happy sound. They're probably all wrestling. It's chaos in this house. All right, so we've got all these little holes. Some people do these a couple at a time, just in talking. I've actually never watched a tutorial on this. I just have talked to people about it, and I got the idea of it. That's how I kind of learn stuff. I, I'm very visual, so I can see someone post a picture of something and just make it. <laughs> I'm very, very blessed like that. Okay. So now you don't have to worry about too much about contaminating the other glitter because it's not really going to. You've already, you've already covered that Mod Podge and you're just gonna tap this glitter onto those spots. All right. There we go, we've got the second, second layer on. Okay, so I'm gonna clean this layer up and we will be back. Okay, so now we're back and um, we're gonna still continue to work with the double color, but now we're gonna remove these tapes. So this is when it comes in very handy that you left yourself a little tab to pull it down. So you're not in there trying to pick it out and get it out and potentially mess up your glitter. So you're just gonna gently pull these down, stick them off to the side. I've got quite a tape pile started over there and I grab my little tab, pull it up and slide it down. Should keep talking to you guys so you can't hear my kids being crazy in the background okay so now what you want to do is you want to be very careful because it is a pain when you get an entire cup done and you realize you've put the wrong colors in the wrong spot so you want if you your black is one of your main primary colors you want a off colored one the double color above it below it to the side and to the side okay so i know that this i whoop, got dropped a little bit of so that, I dripped a little bit of the um, Mod Podge, but I can fix that in post-production. I'll just pour some more black on that. Um, so we're gonna take this and we're gonna butt up against here. This is where it gets real tedious because you gotta hand paint it. So you're gonna butt it up right against it. 
butt it up right against it. Try to make that line at the bottom as straight as possible. Sometimes I use my fingernail to clean it up a little bit to get it perfect. Okay, and then spin it and do the next one. Okay, perfect. This is, again, just extremely tedious. So the easiest way is to start at the top and work your way down. And that's why I'm doing all the top row at the same time. This way you keep track of what squares you're supposed to be doing. So my kids are finding to being two years old is a very tough age to be. <laughs> just kidding. They're actually amazing kids. But they just woke up from a nap, so they're probably a little grumpy. Okay, so now we have that. I can see, though, that I've got that little tiny spot of black, and I don't want that to be hit with the other. So I'm just going to very, very carefully drizzle some of this black on top of it and tap it out. Okay, so now we're going to take this and we're going to pour it on. So all this that you're seeing in there, that's just the inside the cup. That's not on the outside, the glitter. Okay, so we got the top layer. Okay, so now you can see you've got a, a half and half, a half and half, and a half and half. So you know in the middle of that is going to be a red. So it's gonna go half and half, then red, then half and half, then red, then half and half. So every other one, you want to go up against that black and do the exact same thing. And you just gotta carefully paint a square. Sorry, get the cup out of frame there a little bit. Okay, and you want to do that all the way around the cup. And you want to just ride up against the edge of the black over to the next black. And then work your way around the cup. Doing that exact same thing, all right? So I am going to, and then when you get down, you're going to skip a row because that's going to be red. And then you're going to do this very small section down here. Make sure you leave the ring at the bottom. And I'm going to go ahead and put you guys on high speed because you do not need to watch me 45 minutes of slow Mod Podging. Aha, I remembered what the second paintbrush is for. I knew it would come to me. So now I take this paintbrush and I just gently knock any of the glitter out of these squares that I don't want there because I only want red in these squares. So a lot of this glitter that you see is actually on the inside of the cup from where my hand has been. But I'm just going to gently, just in case, you can see there's a little bit of contaminant. I'm just going to knock it out just so we have as little as possible in these spaces. Okay, I think that's pretty good. We'll just do a quick brush, even though this goes black under here. Okay. Move that out of the way for a sec. So parchment paper is great because it doesn't, um, glitter doesn't stick to it. So that is why right now I'm using it as my catching uh, material. Okay, so now you're going to do the same thing. You got to very carefully go edge to edge. So this part is much slower than any of the other parts because it's even more tedious than the last one because even the last one you got to you could just kind of flub the edge a little bit. This one you have to be dead on. So I only do a cut one row at a time. Just so that because it takes me a little longer to do each square. And I don't want the Mod Podge drying while I'm in the middle of the next one. Because then I gotta do double work. Okay, so we got that. And this is when the cup really starts to pop. This is my favorite part. And there we go, you got your first one. 
So I'm just gonna keep doing that all the way around the cup on any of the spare holes. That's gonna be red, and then the bottom I'm gonna make black, but I'm just gonna speed this up for you guys, and I'm gonna go through and finish the red. Okay, we are back, and you can see the colors on this cup are really starting to pop and take shape, and it's beautiful, and you can see, like, the squares are not exactly even. It doesn't matter. It looks beautiful, nobody cares. We get so up in our heads about it, that it has to look perfect that we almost end up stripping too many cups because we're so over picky about ourselves. But people love this stuff. And it's made by hand. It's supposed to be irregular just a little bit. That's the beauty of being made by hand. Um, plus, it's just really not noticeable. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just carefully... Sorry, I'm not in frame here. I'm carefully painting down around the stem. We're going to do this black. Again, there's a little bit of red contaminant in there, but the black is so dominant it won't even show. So we're just zhuzhing this on there. Nothing fancy. Doesn't have to be like crazy smooth or anything. Just get it on there. Some, some people like their Mod Podge crazy smooth, but that gives me a headache. I cannot, I cannot handle sitting there for that long doing it. Okay, so we've got kind of Mod Podge everywhere. Make sure it's all around the bottom, around the edges. Okay. Move that out of the way and pour the black. Now, this will need two coats because we didn't base paint it, and that's fine. I'm just going to let it sit, and we'll be back and do some more coats. That way if you missed any spot, oh, there's a dog hair or something. If you missed any spots, we can get it with the second coat. No worries. Okay, there's see there's a weird little tiny spot there that I missed. But I'm gonna set this, let this set for probably four or five hours. Let that Mod Podge really stick down and get a good grip on it. And you can see all the sparkle. It looks amazing. I'm loving it. These are so fun to do and people love them. All right, so I'm gonna let this sit for a few minutes, well, hours, and we will be back. All right, guys, so I have the entire cup um, done with two layers. It has sat for quite a while, a couple hours, um, and so it's nice and dry. So now we're going to take it outside, and I'm going to clear coat spray it, and then I, once that dries, I'm going to do a layer of the gloss triple thick glaze. The reason I'm doing that is because I really want this red to stay really red, and I want the black to stay really black, and I don't want any glitter contaminant coming from anywhere else. And when you get uh, epoxying, if some of this glitter is loose, it's going to move into those spaces. So I do the acrylic, uh, uh, clear acrylic um, spray first, and then just to double coat it and double check it, I put the triple thick over the top. Now, the triple thick you don't have to do. That is me just being extremely precautious about this. Um, you can pr I could probably do it with just this clear coat, um, but I just do a backup plan and always add the triple thick just to make sure that nothing gets contaminated. All right, so I'm going to take it outside, spray it, and then I'm going to do a co coat of triple thick, and we're going to let it dry, and we will be back. Hey, guys, we are back, and this cup has um, been spray painted, so I did two coats of clear coat spray paint on it. Um, it's nice and sturdy. Um, you can feel that the, the glitter just feels like it's really stuck on there well. However, I want to double, 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 triple, 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 make sure that I um, get that. I don't want that glitter to move. So we're going to put triple, triple thick on the top. I buy it in the jar. Um, I'm going to pour a little bit out onto a plate and then we're going to brush it because I don't want to get my triple thick contaminated. It's a little harder to clean this one than it is the Mod Podge. So I'm going to put it on a plate. We will get started. I'm going to just do a coat real quick for you guys just so you can see the application. All right, guys, we are back. These, uh, this cup is completely covered with triple thick. 
Um, you can now, if you have never worked with epoxy and you're too scared to, it's okay. Uh, you can do this with now dishwasher safe Mod Podge and then let it sit for 24 hours. However, it won't get that glossy, beautiful, shiny look that uh, epoxy does. Um, the epoxy is going to make it look like a, a, like glass. Um, actually, I have one going right there. So you can see the difference. That one is very, very shiny. It's only got one coat of epoxy. Um, that's another tutorial. So if you guys want to learn how to make that cup, check out my <laughs> check out my tutorials because that's that's another one I'm working on. Um, I've already got my chemical mask on. So you can see how shiny that other cup is that's up there um, as opposed to how uh, muted this one is. It's still a beautiful cup and it would be perfect for as a gift for somebody just like this. However, I want to get that glassy, beautiful finish on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a version of the hang method, but we're going to leave it sitting on the silicone mat. If any drips to the bottom, that's fine. We're going to clean it out with our drill tool. I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Um, to problem solve that. You could also, in theory, put this on a foam noodle and shove it in there. And you probably will have to actually add a little out on the outside of the foam noodle. I think this is wider than a foam noodle. So you'll have to add some like uh, drawer liner grippy stuff and put it around and then shove it in there. Um, I might do that for my second layer just to show you guys the difference. But for this one, I'm gonna show you how to start with the hang method. So I already have my epoxy mixed A and B. Uh, you can get epoxy anywhere. I will link my favorite epoxies in the drop down menu below so you guys can see what I use and why. Um, so now we're going to have our little bit of epoxy. This is only going to take a small amount. I might have to mix a little more, but we're going to try to do this with just this amount. So what you're going to do is you're going to just, this round, we're just going to put it on with our hand. This is kind of a version of the hang method that I do for my cups, um, but it's actually not going to be hanging. It's going to be sitting. So I guess this is the sit method. Um, but we're, this is just going to be a very thin coat. Uh, when you do the hang method, you have to do more coats of the same epoxy over and over and over to get the same as you would on a turner. But not everybody has a turner, so I wanted to show you guys this as an option, um, especially for everyone who's new that's getting into this and who hasn't invested in getting one of those fancy turners that you just saw my other cup on. Those are very, very handy if you're going to be making a lot of birthday gifts and Christmas gifts for friends, you definitely should invest in one. Um, I'm working on a tutorial on how to make one. Uh, they're very, very easy to make. Um, so I'm working on that for you guys. If you make a turner, please don't use a um, microwave motor. Do your research. Those things have no cooling system on them and are only designed to run for a few minutes at a time, not hours and hours. And the motor gets extremely hot and is causing house fires. So this is my PSA for you guys, is please do your research when buying a tumbler turner or making one and do not use a microwave turner. Use a rotisserie turner. Rotisserie turners have indoor, inside fans uh, in their components to help cool the motor down so it doesn't get hot and it can run for hours and hours and it can hold up to like 30 pounds and spin it. That's a huge, huge plus compared to the microwave motor. A microwave motor can only hand, handle 12 to 16 ounces. All right, so you can see how we've got the epoxy all layered on that top part. It's not going to be perfect yet. It's going to take a couple coats to get that really glassy look. We're just getting it started here for the first round. It doesn't take a lot of epoxy. You saw that I had maybe five mLs mixed. When you're covering glitter, if you're doing it just on the base and then adding the glitter, it's a lot less epoxy. When you're trying to then cover the glitter, you've got to use a little bit less. So for to put the epoxy on, you'll probably use maybe two mLs. On any other cup, not this cup, we use Mod Podge, but to add the glitter to another cup, it's two mLs. To cover glitter, you're gonna need like five or six mLs. So I was almost dead on the money with how much I needed for this cup. I shouldn't get too much. If you use too much, you really will for sure drip over the edge. I'm trying to use the exact amount to just cover it, but not drip. Because the dripping is really a problem to clean up. Um, it's, you, it's doable, you can definitely clean it. I'll show you guys how. Uh, but if you can avoid having to clean it, that's just a time saver for you. All right, so now this one is gonna sit just like this um, and I'm gonna let it cure for probably about nine hours and then add, make sure it's pretty tacky and mostly through its curing process and we'll add another layer. Uh, but like I said, I'm, I'm thinking through that maybe I will shove this on a turner for you guys so you can see it done that way as well. 
All right, she's gorgeous. It's gonna be so beautiful at the finished product. All right, guys, we'll be back when she's all cured. All right, so these have now three layers. I, I actually did one simultaneously as I was doing the other one for your tutorial because I wanted to show you the slight difference between using a black, a, just a plain black uh, glitter and a black that has the extra shimmers in it. So you can see this cup. I prefer the plain black because you get a very, very distinct uh, look with the red and the, and the black. This one is a little more muddled, but this one is more sparkly, as you see on the, on the bottom. This one is more flat black, and this one has more sparkle in it. So ultimately, you just gotta decide which one and which look you like. But again, I prefer the flat black. Like they say, it kinda looks like tar underneath. Uh, but there's a little bit of red contamination, and I actually think it's really, really pretty. Um, so I'm gonna stick with these. But these are gonna be great, because I'm hang methoding, I'm doing hang method on these. And I wanted to tell you guys, as I'm doing the hang method on these, I'm starting, I'm doing one round of hang method this way. Then that one is gonna cure. I let them go for like nine, 10 hours. I flip it over and then I hang method this way and then flip it over and let that sit, let this one cure, then flip it over and do it this way. So I'm flipping it back and forth. That way, if the epoxy does move, I don't end up with it all just pulled down on one edge. So that way it's getting a little thicker here and then I flip it and then it gets a little thicker here. Um, but it does give you, when you flip it and you're sit, just sitting on something instead of hanging on something, because um, I'm actually sitting these because it's a lot easier for me to do in my workshop um, because these don't have a big neck so they don't sit straight on stuff unless you stuff a bunch of stuff in them. I just find it to be easier to just plop it down on something, do my hang method, and then this is actually perfect because I'll be able to go back through with you guys and show you how to clean up this edge. So you can see there that this edge is getting a buildup of the um, hang method that would have normally dripped off. Um, but I, I'm kind of trying to get a tutorial started for you guys on how to do fix your edges, clean it up, soften all these st stuff off. So we will keep going with that in the future. But this right now, what I want to show you is these have three layers of epoxy on them. Um, and I'm going to take the sandpaper. It's almost soft. This is 220 grit. It's very, very gentle. Um, and I want to start getting this cup ready to be smooth because hang method takes more work. If you don't have a turner, the hang method is med method does take a lot more layers um, and a little more time and work to do it and get a smooth surface. But it does, in fact, work. I have a lot of people saying it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Well, I'm, my response is it doesn't work for you because you're probably not doing it right. Uh, you're probably using too much epoxy or not enough epoxy or something. There's a happy balance here with this um, hang method. So you don't want to sand too far. You just want to gently start rubbing these ridges down and you don't want to go so far that you hit the, the glitter but you just want to go just far enough to where you can start getting a nice glossy finish when you do your next round so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sand this down a little bit and then I'm gonna come back and show you guys how to clean the lip up and then I'm actually gonna put them on my turner if you don't have a turner that's fine just keep going with the uh, hang method um, but because I have turners and <laughs> A lot of the people watching this do have turners. I'm gonna do that as the option. So you've already seen me do hang method on it. And now I'm gonna show you how to get these wine glasses stuck onto your turner so that you can uh, get them rolling and get a nice thick layer on and, and finish up the cup. Because with this one, really, if you're doing hang method, you're probably gonna need three or four more layers over the top of this. With a turner method, you only need one more. So once you get it sanded and get all the bumps and things knocked off of it, you can uh, throw it on your turner and just do one more coat. All right, so that's basically it. You're just gonna do a gentle sanding. I use, like I said, with 220 grit, um, I'll probably sand just, if you're doing hen, hang method, you'll need to sand a bit more, but because I'm do, gonna do turner method, I don't need to sand any more. Um, well, I'll sand the edge here. But I am gonna kick off real quick, and I will be back with all my tools, and I will show you how to clean up that edge. Okay, guys, we are back. I've got my little tool set up, and I've got my dust mask. Anytime you do any sanding, like hard sanding, when you're doing just a gentle like that, you're not creating dust. But when you're about to do anything like this or a lot of sanding, you need to wear one of these uh, because uh, you don't want to be inhaling the little tiny dust particles that come off from the epoxy into your lungs. Um, that's just a personal thing. I don't know if that's even the thing, but I do it because it just seems safer to me. So I have this cool little tool. I will link this tool because I get a million questions about this tool every time I use it. I will put a link for this tool in the description menu under the video. Uh, I have searched out a pretty decent price for these. These are the handiest tool beside your turner for your cups. This is gonna be your next handiest tool uh, that you use for your cups because I use these for this for every single repair that I do. Um, it's very rare 
that I don't use this one. I have to do a repair. Um, so it comes with all these little heads, sandings, uh, sanding papers, buffing papers, uh, buffers, uh, brushes to do texture on the cups. It has these special little tools to do fine point. Like if I get a gnat stuck to my cup, I can take one of these fine points and just zit zhuzh right into that gnat and get rid of it without damaging any of the cup. Um, it has all these cool little tools. These are just all different types. You have a brush for cleaning. Uh, you have all these little buffing and working tools. It comes with so many little heads and I use almost everything in there for different things. Um, okay, so I am gonna show you, I'm gonna use this tool. I'm gonna start with my bigger part of the sander because it's gonna be quite a bit of sanding to get this little edge down. And we're gonna get it going. guys, you kind of see the idea of what I'm doing. So I'm going to zoom this up. I'm going to, you're still going to be able to watch, but I'm going to put it on high speed because I don't think you need to waste 20 minutes watching exactly how I do this whole rim. When I go to switch tools and do a buff, we will, uh, I will come back for you guys. So we're now here at the step. I have uh, sanded it. You saw me work with my little tool to clean up the edge. Um, I didn't clean up the inside edge because I know we're gonna end up with, with epoxy in there again anyway, uh, because we're gonna epoxy right on top of this and it's gonna touch this and it's gonna get stuck there. So I'm gonna have to sand again. But this, I just wanted to get that big rim off from doing the hang method on this and shove it. So you see what I've used is a pool noodle and then I take the drawer liner and electrical tape and I wrap the drawer liner around with the electrical tape and that sucker is not gonna go anywhere. Like, I, this is a glass and I'm not worried about dropping it because it's not gonna go anywhere. Um, so this one I'm gonna put on my turner and we will get another coat of epoxy going and we'll be back. All right, guys, there she is, all finished. Um, this was all finished off with hang method. I did a round, I did two rounds of hang method on it, and then I did a layer of epoxy on my turner. Then I did all the sanding and finishing, cleaned up all the edges, and then I threw another layer of hang method over the top just to get that glassy finish after I had sanded it, and it came out gorgeous. Um, so like I showed you in the one little scene, um, the difference between the black that you um, sprinkle some extra dust into just to get the sparkle compared to this. This one's the flat black one and it's actually perfect in my mind. I really like it. It's got a little bit of red contamination over the black um, which you can avoid with more sealer but I ultimately decided to leave it um, because I think it looks really beautiful with just a little bit of red inside the black giving a little bit of shimmer. Um, it's gorgeous, guys. I'm in love with this one. So I hope you guys learned something. You can do this on any tumbler. So the same pattern, you can do it on a skinny cup, a curved cup, uh, stainless steel, glass, plastic. This, this uh, style of taping off and doing this buffalo plaid can work on any cup. All right, guys? Because I know you're going to ask me that question. Can you do it on other cups? Yes. I just did it on a wine glass to try something new and to do something different, um, to be a little out of the box today. Uh, but again, you can do this on any cup. All right, guys, subscribe to my channel. I'm putting out tons of videos. If you haven't checked out my other tutorials, just click on Little Lee and Rose at the bottom of this tutorial, and it will take you to all my videos. And I've got a lot of good stuff there with a lot of cool techniques, a lot of things you've probably never seen before. And I just really try to put out some really rad stuff for you guys to learn from and to use and to grow your business. Um, so check it out, check it out, check it out. Subscribe, ring that bell so you get notifications when I put out new tutorials so you don't miss anything. And join my Facebook group. The link is in the drop down menu in the description below this tutorial. It has the link to my different social media outlets, um, but also a link to my Facebook page where you can ask me questions and interact uh, with a bunch of other Tumblr makers. And there's some super talent in that group, guys. And it's amazing just to be inspired by what they're doing. So um, check us out and uh, we will see you guys on the next tutorial.